Rush Limbaugh's wit and wisdom has blessed the lives of many Americans. You can hear some of that wit and wisdom here on the James A. Hendricks School of Leadership. Hello, guys. Happy Saturday. I'm recording this in the wee hours of the morning uh, because, quite frankly, what what's said needs to be said. Um, basically, it's becoming a Latter-day Saint and how that affected my ideology. Okay, so I, I hope you have your seatbelts buckled. This is going to be a wonderful treat for each and every single one of you. Um, so sit down, buckle them seatbelts. Now, I was... I was raised a Southern a Southern Baptist, you know. I see pecan pie, fried chicken, you know. Church on sun um, church on Sundays. Sometimes lunch on the grounds, all depends. But this this one thing I do know is that I grew up, went off to college and meandered. But I meandered from some of the uh, populist conservative uh, stuff that my, my parents. And yes, I was, I was actually a flaming liberal from, say, I guess 1988 until 1994. And then, I don't know, just little by little, my friends in college just willing to lay at that. I became a conservative. And I became, um, as the years went on, I became one of them uh, uh, reactionary conservatives who felt they could find a cons conspiracy theory under every rock. But some pulverizing things happened in my life that began the metamorphosis to change all that. I was married on June 14th, 1997, and I felt, despite some of our problems, that we had a chance of having a happy marriage. The thing was, over the last, we were married for about, I guess I would say about 20 months, a year and a half. And the last nine months of our marriage were <laughs> very problematic. We moved to Arlington, Texas. Uh, the expectations on me were high. The expectations on her were low. And things deteriorated to the point to where I was like, you know, hey, <laughs> I don't know. And so she gave me a brute and it. It broke my heart. And so I began to come on a journey to where I could find some of the answers of that pain that came, you know. Some people, sadly, they join, they join my faith for what it can do for them. You know, in some ways monetarily. I joined... I joined, quite frankly... To see if I could answer my pain. And answer other people's pain as well. And so... I guess it was June of 2000, things came to a head. I'd been hurting for about, well, we separated in February 1999. Divorce was final in September of 1999. And by June 2000, I tried the social drinking um, montage again.
which ended me landing flat on my keys, uh, depressed and flat on my keys. And the counselor confronted me about this and said, look, if you are that miserable, you can't go on like this. You have to make some changes. And so I did. Um, I had hid a missionary copy of the Book of Mormon um, under my bed so that my friends like Brad and Julie couldn't see it. Now, my friend Jim Bob at the time, he couldn't, he couldn't have cared less. He was kind of like, you know, if you're depressed, you need to find what it takes to go for that makes you happy. But I knew that if I showed them the Book of Mormon, they would demand that they be put out of the house. Or it would mean, to some degree, the end of the friendship. But I couldn't keep going on the way I was going. And so, at first I read with skepticism, you know, kind of dividing like a silent science. But then my buddy Keith said, hey, read it to cover to cover the real intent. And so I did. Okay. This is where things come to a head. February 27, 2001. I report to my voluntary position at... Uh, Legal Aid. And a few days before, I had was trying to help him fill out some legal documents. And of course, you know, they didn't have a computer set up for someone that had a visual impairment. And I accidentally tapped the wrong uh, button. And I got called in by one of the uh, bosses that says, hey, you you tap you tapped in the wrong program, it screwed up some of our files. We, we have to terminate you immediately. And I went my I went home, put the covers over my head and cried. Then the next evening, okay, I was like, you know, I, I my friends, uh, Brad, and, uh, I mean Brad and Julie, they told me, "Don't do this. You're crazy. You're crazy. Don't do this. You won't be happy. We won't be happy." But then I started writing what I knew about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and what they believed. And let me tell you something: I started crying because I knew what I had to do. The next morning. March the 1st, and I'm, I'm going to get my scriptures out to, to prove something to you guys. Okay, so get ready. I'm going to go into the Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi, Chapter 2. I want you guys to please, please forgive me, but my faith is a part of everything I do. And this verse illustrates it, okay, because it's this verse... That I'm about to go to. That began me the track of me finding all the answers. To some of the pain that I needed at that point in my life. Okay, so. I want you guys to, to, to get ready to receive this. Um, and then. Let me see here what's up. Okay, almost there. It's taken a while. It's a lot of verses. Yeah. Verse 25. Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. Let me tell you something. Tears came to my eyes. Because I finally found the answers to a lot of my pain from my divorce. Joy, which is happiness, is something that we pursue. 
and it's not the happiness that's based on circumstances. Now, long story short, the date of July 8th, 9th, uh, 2001, with, with a good friend of mine named, named Chris, who is now one of the regional leaders of my church. He was the head of the elders in my congregation at the time. I went down into the waters with him. He helped me. And then um, he pronounced the words, and I was baptized. And I, I will remember forever what it felt like coming out of the water. It's like the Holy Ghost is witnessing to me. You're clean. You're clean. It was like a bright light was shining on me. Like the Lord. The Lord, the Heavenly Father was pleased with me. Okay, so you know you're saying, Okay, okay, Jimmy, you've gone out, you've gone all preaching on this. You haven't said how this affects your ideology. Let me tell you something. It affected it, me almost immediately. I had selected some new slates of friends, and I started emailing them my conspiracy theories that I was getting from a friend of Jim Bob's, and my friend Chris, thank goodness, he, he stopped me from becoming so reactionary, he's like, hold, hold, hold on, Jimmy, now no, just, 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 just wait a dang minute. How do you know all this? It stopped me in my tracks. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. Jimmy, you have that bachelor's degree in political science. And it's taught you to research your findings behind your ideology before you just go nuts on it. And so that was my wake-up call. And through further studying of my faith, you know, I had been a, a die-hard, die-in-the-wall Republican. In some ways, I still am. But nationally, it's, it's a problem. So, as a Latter-day Saint, I became what's known as a conservative federalist. It's not really a moderate, like the Republican establishment. But it's tempered with more proactive wisdom ideology that's in the scriptures, okay? <laughs> because if you don't if you don't have that proactive ide wisdom ideology that's in the scriptures, you're 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 sunk. You are sunk. Now you guys got me <laughs> I'm going to search my church's app for the word ideology. Oh, interesting. A lot of interesting things. <laughs> Pretty interesting. I mean, it gives you the freedom to form your own ideology. But the fact of the matter is, uh, you need to have this with the ideology uh, with, with faith. Okay? Because in, 
and, and here's the thing. What I love about being a Latter-day Saint, it's, it's politically neutral. It's politically neutral, okay? And so that's where, that's where some of the blessing is. Because you, you get that neutrality. You get that strength in, in neutrality. I could sit there and complain and moan and groan about how fractured the Republican Party is. But you know what? The way I see it, there's times when things have become so reactive and contentious that I feel like I'm called to be more of a conservative federalist. I was that way after the election of 2020. Now, make no mistakes. In the way I am a MAGA cons conservative, I support Trump. Now, as his public affairs consultant, I have to say, he needs to kind of tone down his words a little bit towards other people. That's just that's just saying what I have to say. I, I will I will endorse him, but at the same time, you know, we don't need we don't need a lot more contention beyond what we already got. Contention's not going to make America great again. Okay, peace is. You see, I I, I believe in a distracted, defiant culture, which is. Reactive to the core. And it's brought on by none other than the enemy of our souls, you know, the devil, Lucifer, Hasatan, you know, Lucifer, you know what I mean? So we need to overcome him and overcome the world, okay? Just so you know, this is where this is where I'm really preaching at home, you guys, okay? I want you guys to take care and, and know, know that I care. Next week, we're going to have a little, another series. I'm taking a break Thanksgiving Day. With that, I hope you enjoy listening to the James A. Hendricks School of Leadership. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Become a part of um, the James A. Hendricks School of Leadership classroom. This is Jimmy Hendricks, and until next time, um, take care and be proactively informed. Monday, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how the church has brought out more of the political science mind to me. Take care. Be proactively informed. God bless you guys.